we are looking at the last section in John chapter 6. I called this, What It Takes to Believe. We've been seeing throughout John that he speaks about evidence, evidence about Jesus, which is all there calling for belief in Jesus, because it's only by believing in Jesus that we can have life through him. So evidence, belief, life. And we've seen incredible evidence in John chapter 6 already. But amazingly, the signs of the feeding of the 5,000 and the walking on water, that evidence all by itself is not enough to get people to believe. And that's what we're going to see in this section. Actually, a bigger miracle is needed than that. So I really do encourage you, just take some time to read through the passage. If you haven't yet subscribed to this channel, then do that now. Subscribe, like this video, share it with others if you think it would be useful for them. And as always, I'm going to show you what I've seen in this passage. And let's be digging into God's Word prayerfully that God would reveal incredible things about himself, about the way he works in the world. And it is my prayer that as his word continues to go out, that many more will believe and find the life that is found in him alone. So as always, I'm just going to highlight some of what I've seen. And just looking at these words, uh, believe, in this case, do not believe. And then we see at the end of this passage, Simon Peter saying, we have come to believe. And that's the point that we want to get to ourselves. We want our hearers to get to. And we also see a couple of things about life. The Spirit gives life. And Jesus' words are full of the Spirit and life. And Peter says, you have the words of eternal life. So belief and life are in this section. Some of the key characters that we see in this section are Jesus' disciples, but they weren't distinguishing between disciples and the twelve. So we're going to see a big group of disciples here in verse 66, no longer following Jesus. But the twelve continue to follow him. Although, surprisingly and tragically in this section, we do hear about one who will betray him. One of these twelve. And Jesus knew who would betray him right from the start. And just contextually, it's worth just remembering and noting that this is only one day after the feeding of the 5,000 and Jesus walking on water. And so this big crowd have just heard Jesus t teaching, which is the previous section, that big section of teaching Jesus saying, I am the bread of life. Uh, Eat my flesh, drink my blood, come to me, believe in me and have life. And sadly, many of his disciples turned back and no longer followed him as a result of these words. And we've got the 12 then still with him. Jesus says, do you want to leave me too? Simon Peter answers on behalf of them, we can't go to anyone else. You have the words of eternal life. We've come to believe and to know. But tragically, even one of those 12, Judas, the son of Simon Iscariot, would later betray him. So it would take much more than just the miracle of the feeding of the 5,000 or the miracle of Jesus walking on water. It would take more than that to get these people to believe in Jesus. So we've got the disciples and the 12 and obviously Jesus uh, being a key character in this section too. And importantly, here in verse 63, we see the Spirit. And verse 63 is the key verse in this section. So it's worth just taking special notes of verse 63. Just a couple of other things to take note of. So this word teaching here is the Greek word word or logos which we've seen uh, back in chapter 1, verse 1, the word became flesh. And so the crowd's saying, this is a hard word, it's a hard teaching. They are rejecting the word who became flesh. And that word and these words, the words here, and you have the words, those two are a different Greek word, the word rhema. And 
John is, is doing that, I think, intentionally. So what we see in verse 63 is the Spirit gives life and the words I've spoken to you, they are full of the Spirit and life. And what we're seeing here is that the Spirit and the Word work together. Uh, the Spirit needs to do a miraculous work in people. And importantly, when Jesus says, the Spirit gives life, the flesh counts for nothing. What he's talking about here is our human nature. By nature, we are incapable of producing genuine spiritual life. The Holy Spirit is the one who powerfully works in and through Jesus to bring people to genuine spiritual life. We can't bring ourselves to life. And one possible cross-reference to, to that would be Ephesians 1, uh, Ephesians 2 at least, where we are told that we were dead in our transgressions and sins, but by God's grace we've been made alive through Christ. We can't make ourselves alive. The flesh counts for nothing. You could also cross-reference back to uh, 6 verse 44, where Jesus said, Unless the Father draws someone, they will not believe. So in and of ourselves, our flesh, we can't, we can't see Jesus. We can't stir ourselves to belief. We need the Spirit's enabling. When we see the crowd turning away from Jesus and no longer following him, that's actually the normal response of sinful humanity. And if you go and look at John 1 verse 11, John told us that the word came to that which he had made, but those who were his own rejected him. But then if we carry on to verses 12 and 13, we do hear that some believe, some come to trust that Jesus is who he says he is. He is the Son of God who gives life to the world. But it's only those, again, who are born of God. God is the one who does this miraculous work in a person. So what we see in this section playing out is that a person can only believe and have life if a miracle happens. And that miracle is a spiritual miracle that the Holy Spirit does in a person. And that miracle, that spiritual miracle, is linked with the Word of God, the Word of Jesus. And all Scripture is Jesus' Word to us. And so, the Word of God needs to be taken by the Spirit of God and made real in a person's life. Because the flesh counts for nothing. We can't understand this Word and bring ourselves to life. It is a miraculous work of God that anyone believes in Jesus. So this passage starts with 5,000 people, the feeding of the, well, more than 5,000, probably a crowd of 20,000 if you add the women and children who are with Jesus. But we end with just the 12. And the miracle isn't, the, the surprising thing at least, isn't that the crowds turn away. In our natural, fleshly, sinful nature, we will turn away from Jesus. The miracle in this section is that some stay. And Simon Peter, being the spokesman for the disciples, saying, we can't go to anyone else. Your words, your words are full of spirit and life. They are the words of eternal life. We've come to believe that, that you are the Holy One of God. You're the one we've been waiting for. So this is where the miracle is happening. The surprising, but or not surprising, but sad thing happens as many walk away from Jesus. The miracle is that some believe. Some believe and receive the life that is found in Jesus alone. And Jesus then says some shocking truths, saying, Yes, I've chosen you, the twelve, but one of you is a devil. That must have been a shocking thing to hear. But Jesus knew from the beginning, he knew from the beginning which of them would not believe and who would betray him. He knew that Judas would one day turn away from him and betray him. That is a, a terribly sad reality, but it's actually not surprising. As we've seen, the miracle is that anyone would come to this point and say, we can't go to anyone else. We know that you have the words of eternal life. We've come to believe and to know that you are the Holy One of God. And so all of this is 
circling around verse 63 here, it is the Spirit who gives life. That is a spiritual a miracle that anyone comes to a point of belief. And it is the words that Jesus has spoken that are full of the Spirit and life. It is Jesus' words that bring a person to that point of believing. And so as you dig in further into this passage, if you are with Christians, encourage them. They are miraculous. A spiritual miracle has happened within them. We don't need to be looking for signs like the feeding of the 5,000 or walking on water. The miracles that are happening today are astronomical as we see Jesus changing hearts, bringing people to faith in him and giving them life eternal through him. If you are reading this with somebody who's not yet a believer, then tell them that the only way they can believe is not them in their flesh uh, willing themselves to life. Their only hope is for a miracle. And say that you'll be praying for them and with them that that miracle would take place. That they would come to a point where they say, Lord, we can't go to anyone else. You have the words of eternal life. I've come to believe and to know that you are the Holy One of God. Well, I encourage you to keep digging into this very rich passage and may those who you teach this to be greatly blessed through God's word. Well, God bless.